Good to see everybody. Be turning your Bibles to uh, uh, 1 John chapter 2 once again, please. 1 John chapter 2. All right, we'll go ahead and get started with a word of prayer. Lord, I'm thankful, Lord, this morning for waking us up. Lord, thank you for health and strength and the liberties and things that we have, Lord, to meet with you. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would touch hearts. Father, I pray that you'd help them to see what's, uh, what is being taught today. Lord, strengthen them and encourage them, Lord, uh, through your word. Help me to tell the truth this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, 1 John chapter uh, 2. And we almost finished this uh, part last week, but I wanted to take a little bit of extra time. And that's the reason the, the lesson is still the same as uh, last week. So if, uh, has everybody got one? Uh, either they're all the same if you had one from last week. Or... All right, uh, let's read a couple of these things and see... Uh, Verse 19, it says, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, <clears throat> and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is Antichrist, and that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same <clears throat> hath not the Father. But he that... <coughs> Man. Verse 24, let that therefore abide, okay, watch that word, in you which ye have from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain, keep that one in mind, in you, ye shall also continue, keep that one in mind, in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that He hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Verse 27. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. There's that word again. And you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide, there it is again, in him. So you're going to find this uh, uh, word uh, when you look uh, here. And the reason I wanted to go back over it is because of those three different little words there. Because uh, last week, if you remember, we started some things and we started talking about this saying of truth and error. And if you was to go out today, uh, go on campus or anywhere and start witnessing, just stopping random people and ask them, and I've done this before, I'd, I'd tell them I want, I want to take a survey, you know, and stuff, and it kind of perks their ears up a little bit about what is, you know, and stuff. And so is what I'd ask them is, you know, questions like this. What is truth? You're going to get 200 different answers if you ask 200 people. Now, some of them might be close to the same, some of them uh, whatever. But, I mean, in today's world, when you ask somebody what is truth, the only thing that's truth, uh, they say, well, truth is relative. In other words, truth is what you want it to be. And so, uh, again, if, uh, if this uh, practice that you're doing or saying or, or watching or being someplace, again, if that's good for you, then that's all that matters. And so, again, that's why I'm glad that we have the Word of God. 
we have in the, the Word of God that teaches us and the Holy Spirit that teaches us about who Jesus Christ is. And uh, Pilate asked the same question when Jesus is standing before him. He says, what is truth? And he knew what truth was. And, and see, Jesus, even uh, the Bible says in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the truth. In other words, that little definite article right there, the life, the truth, the way. No other way. No other truth. In other words, and so this, this is what uh, it is right there, this thing of truth. And this truth, again, is going to shine light on what is false. And by that, that's what we saw last week. If you look in, in uh, that verse uh, 26, uh, these things have I written in you concerning them that seduce you. Okay, and we talked a little bit, uh, you know, about, uh, about this thing, you know, being uh, seduced. And I wanna, we want to look at a couple of scriptures because uh, it's only, that word is only mentioned about six or seven times in the, in the Word of God. And there's a lot of them that's in the New Testament. And so we're not going to uh, look at the one in the Old Testament and things like that. There's one in Ezekiel uh, that talks about that, but we're not going to turn there. Let's uh, turn, uh, because um, I don't know if you wrote this definition of seduce last word. In other words, to cause to wonder. In other words, wandering around. In other words, and that's what Ephesians 4.11 talks about. In other words, uh, when, it, when it said that they're blown about with all wind of doctrine. In other words, somebody will say something, and a person will say, well, that sounds right. Another person will get up there and say something that's just the opposite of that. And they'll say, well, that sounds right, okay, too, but you know who's right and who's wrong? You have to have a measurement to show what is right and what is wrong. And that's why we have this King James Bible here that's going to show us and teach us what exactly is right and wrong and what is truth. And so seduced, uh, to hold your place there in 1 John and uh, go back to, uh, let's try 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4. These are very familiar scriptures. Uh, 1 Timothy, just a couple books back uh, to your left there. From 1 John. Everybody there? Now notice what it says. In uh, verse 1. Now the Spirit, capital S, speaketh expressly that in the latter times, and we looked at that last week, we won't go into it again about what is the latter times. We looked last day, latter time, we looked at about, probably about eight or ten scriptures, so we won't go back into that today. Some shall depart from the faith, not faith, but the faith. You see, every man, regardless whether he's saved or lost, has a measure of faith. In other words, I can have faith of an airplane that when I pay my ticket and get on that plane, that uh, I can have faith that's going to get me from here to point B. Okay, and, and again, that's, that's just uh, normal, everyday faith. Uh, but this is talking about the faith, and we don't have time, but if you write Jude verse 3 and 4, uh, you're going to see down there about uh, what Jude is writing about, and he's talking about uh, the faith. And so, in other words, the faith that once was delivered to the saints. In other words, again, it's just uh, the truth is there. Now notice what it says. They're going to depart from the faith. Where does faith come from? What's that? The word, okay, write down Romans ten seventeen. We can probably all quote it. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? The word of God. The word of God. So we know that where faith is going to come from is we've got to be in this book right here in order to build our faith. Otherwise, it's just you know uh, suggestions or, or things like that. It's not going to give us the truth uh, to build up the faith. Notice what it says: giving heed. No, they're going to start obeying to what? Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, plural. In other words, and uh, again, we don't have time, but if you write down Matthew 24 and go over and look at some of those scriptures, uh, uh, you're going to see exactly where Christ is talking about 
the tribulation, he's talking about the, some end time because uh, the apostle or the disciples then had asked him, you know, what about this, you know, last days and all, all this and things like that. And uh, the very first thing that he told them after he had uh, made a few comments was, take heed. In other words, uh, again, that there's going to be false Christ, there's going to be false uh, Jesuses, there's going to be false spirits. And that's what you find a lot of times out in a lot of these churches and on the radio and on the TV is these false spirits and these false uh, doctrine and everything else. You say, why is that? It's because they've made up something that's not, uh, and it's not here. And so, again, the error. Uh, and so is what we got to do is watch out. So uh, seducing spirits, note that's a, a little s. But if you notice the first S, uh, now the Spirit speaketh expressly. In other words, to speak, uh, when you start talking about that, to direct, in other words, is direct. Uh, uh, that in the latter times some shall depart, giving heed to the, sedu- the small spirits. See, there's a lot of spirits out there. People, uh, uh, and a lot of times people talking about the Spirit ain't talking about the, the right, the Holy Spirit. And that's why they're giving in to these doctrines of devils. And if we had time, we could, you know, run that scripture, but I, that's not the thing for today. Now, turn over a book to Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 3. Everybody there. Notice what it says, verse 13. But evil doers, or evil men, and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And the reason, you know, they're, they're deceiving again is because they don't have the truth or they're not uh, 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 using the truth. And, and notice what it says, and being deceived. So they themselves are deceiving people and being deceived. And so, again, it's, uh, again, it's going to keep getting worse and worse. And uh, uh, you can see it if you just you know, keep an eye and a pulse on what's going out there in the quote-unquote religious world. And I try to you know, read up on that stuff and read this and read that and just to see uh, <clears throat> exactly you know, what's going on as far as the religious crowd and things like that because it, it just makes this book come you know we see it in truth as it's right before our eyes this thing coming to pass and so uh again this thing of, of deception and that's why again i wanted to talk about these things here is be, you know it's because again we don't want to be deceived ourselves and so that's the whole goal of of what we're doing here and uh teaching this uh especially this book right here. Now notice what it says, uh, back to um, 1 John, chapter 2. And that's why we read, you know, in verse 19, we talked about it a little bit last week, they went out from us, but they were not of us. Again, that was those false teachers. And when John and, uh, and things like that, uh, again, he was not writing to a specific church, but church in general. Again, he didn't uh, write this. In other words, he's writing to little children. He's writing to young men and fathers. Again, that maturity range within what he's talking about here. And so that's what we see. And that's the reason they went out uh, of them. In other words, this real church is because of the, the truth that was being preached was exposing what these people were saying. And so they went out. And then it, uh, is what happened is that just showed them up that what they were teaching was not right. And they just went, you know, went out there. And so, again, you see that sometime. Uh, I don't know if I told you this example last week. I can't remember if I did or not. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. Uh, I was studying uh, one day last, I want to say it was last week, it could have been the Friday or whatever, but anyway, and I was memorizing passages, 
and I and I'd read Psalms. I was memorizing Psalms forty three uh, verse five, where it talked, you know, about being, you know, why art thou cast down, O my soul? You know, and why art thou disquieted? In other words, there's some rumbling going on under here, right here, that's causing us. In other words, our heart to be cast down. And, and then and then he says, for I shall yet praise him for the health. Uh, of my countenance and my God. So I can praise him the fact that he's the one that's going to uh, uh, give me, the, you know, the smiles and everything else and, and the fact that he's my God. That's personal. And, uh, and I had read and, and it brought to my attention where it says, Why art thou cast down? And I remember studying about sheep. And my daughter raised sheep when she was in, in school and things like that. Matter of fact, her daughter, my granddaughter now, uh, starting this month, will, she'll be raising her sheep uh, again. But I learned that uh, when it says cast down, uh, through the years what will happen is when you have uh, the, the sheep are raised for the meat and the thing, or the wool and things like that, they're, you know, different things. But when a sheep, when they're doing it for wool, that, that, that sheep will just, you know, get so big and furry. In other words, he can't, you know, they can't hardly move. And it's what happens is if they go there and they step in a hole or if they, they trip or whatever, they're going to fall over. And because they're so weighted down with that, they can't get up. They just lay on their back and they just wave their feet until they die. They run out of strength and they die. They don't have enough smarts and enough strength to get up. That's called being cast down. And so you see what, uh, what, what, uh, how that was. And I happened to think of that when I was memorizing that verse about that. Well, it just so happened that that afternoon, uh, my uh, niece, my wife, you know, uh, on this thing over there, her niece, um, her son, about two years, two and a half, three years, she's still grieving over it. He committed suicide. And uh, taking fentanyl or, you know, something like, I forget now, he got tangled up with those uh, things he was doing, and he just went in his room and never woke up. And that's still, to this day, bothering. She was a strong churchgoer, you know, and believed this, believed that, took the kids and stuff like that. But now, she don't want to have anything to do with God. This is three years later. You know, and things like that. And so I wrote her about what I had learned about being pressed down and, and about being cast down and stuff like that. And I says, you know, this kind of just goes along with that. Well, that's when she wrote my wife back. Well, I don't want to have anything to do with God. If I do, I'll talk to you, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But I just, I knew it seemed like that the Holy Spirit had put that there so that I could help and try to comfort her and I've been comforted in that particular way because our grandson was murdered, you know, and things like that. And so, you know, I just kind of put that thing together. But it's funny how that when you talk about truth, sometimes people don't have anything to do with it. And so that's why I said they went out uh, from among us uh, again. And they no, would have no doubt have continued now, let's look at this thing of continuing uh, uh, again. Let, let, let's look at this. Um, he says, I have not written, verse 21, unto you because you know not the truth. There it is. But because you know it, and that no lies of the truth. Who is a liar? You know, he, that Jesus is the Christ. And we went over that last week. He is Antichrist. He even goes so far. In other words, if you deny that, you're Antichrist. In other words, you say well, you're not the Antichrist, but you're an Antichrist, somebody that's against Christ and what he teaches and what he's doing. Now watch. Uh, he is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. Some people say, well, you know, I just think, you know, Jesus, you know, he was, you know he's, he's my homeboy, he, you know, and things like that. That ain't the God I know, and that's not the God I serve. And he's not the man upstairs. And, I, you know, I hear, you know, I talk to people all the time, you know, and things like that. And, uh, and so uh, uh, we, uh, we see that. But here's, there's people uh, that deny, you know, the Father and the Son. 
In other words, Jesus Christ, I don't want to have anything to do with it. And I went back and looked again just to make sh- almost make sure that I was right in what I was uh, saying. As I looked up a bunch of the cults again and what they believe, and I'm not going to go in, you know, into all that. It's a different class or whatever on cults. But every one of them, with the exception of a minute few, but 99% of them, they deny Jesus and they deny the Son. But it's what got me is the fact that they all started. This is what I was looking for. They all started in a Protestant Christian, quote unquote, background. Their mom or dad was a Presbyterian. And their mom or dad, in other words, were pastors in a church. They were this or that. And from 1803, and again, that's uh, 1804 is when uh, John you know, or Smith, uh, with the Mormonism, that started the Mormonism. In other words, his dad, you know, was a, a Presbyterian preacher. You have the Campbellite, uh, the guy that started the Church of Christ. In other words, in 1834, 35, somewhere around there, all those religions and those denominations that were started in the 1800s all the way up to close to 1900 there's a bunches of them uh jehovah witnesses you know started there you know uh, you got uh taze russell and ruther uh, and rutherford in other words were two guys and they started denying they didn't want they denied hell because and they were said i'm not going to my church and it's what they started believing and trying to teach was all the stuff that I learned, what my parents taught me was wrong. This angel appeared to me and taught me this and said, this is right. And so all these little isms and schisms out there started, most of them, with something uh, right. In other words, at least the gospel, especially back then, you know, and, and especially in some of those denominations, some of them were real strong even back then and taught the gospel even though we may not you know, agree with all the ins and outs of everything else that's being taught within that particular denomination, but they were teaching and preaching the gospel. And I, I looked at that, and I thought about this lesson right here because that, uh, they deny what's going on. And so, again, we see this. But here's, uh, notice uh, verse 23, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. You can't have one without the other. But he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father. Now, here's where I want to try to get into for the next uh, few minutes here that we have left and try to show you how that we can keep ourselves from falling into that trap of uh, being sucked in by these seducers that are teaching error. And I want, I want you to see it because John is going to use three, three words right here and then when we, by the time we, when we tie this up, you're going to see how that I'm doing it uh, and what, what he's saying right here that falls within the context of what, what, what is taking place. Now, verse 24. Let that therefore. Now, what's the that? In other words, we notice the therefore, but the that. Again, he's talking about uh, uh, like... Verse 21, I have not written in you because you know not the truth, but because you know it. That's a that. In other words, uh, he said, I've taught you the truth. In other words, okay, uh, you know what the truth is. In other words, and uh, denying the Son and the Father is not the truth. That's error. And so these guys are gone. And we, and we can see by what they were teaching, they're wrong. And so John is saying, let that therefore, and notice this word, abide. In you, he said, "Let that therefore abide in you." He said, "Okay." You say, "What is that?" Which ye have heard from the beginning. Okay. Now notice, look in chapter one and look back up there in verse one. That which was from the beginning, which ye have heard, there it is, which ye have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, our hands have handled, of the word of life. See, they were saying that Jesus was just you know some uh, mystical being out there. And the reason being was because if he was holy and he said he was God and he was, guess what? They can't associate that because they believe that, you know, sin, in other words, if uh, holiness is touching sin, then it's all wrong. 
And that's what uh, one of the things that they were trying to propagate within that group right there. In other words, we got this special knowledge, this, you know, uh, knowledge here that's going to teach. Uh, th- now, if you come over to our group, we're going to teach you. That's seducing. We're going to get you. In other words, uh, come over here. We got this special evangelist come in. He's going to do this and say this and be that and be that. All you got to do is put 50 bucks in the plate and we're going to send you something. Okay. 50 bucks. I can buy me a King James Bible. Let me. Let that therefore abide, which you have heard from the beginning. Now notice what it is. Abide. Hold your place in John and go back to the book of John, the uh, Gospel of John, and look in chapter 15. John 15. Everybody there? Verse 3. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So it's the word that's going to you know, clean, us, clean us up, right? Uh, uh, Ephesians 5 talks about the washing of the uh, water of regeneration. Titus chapter, uh, chapter 1 and verse, uh, or chapter 3 verse 5. It says the same, basic same thing. Now watch. Verse 4, abide in me, and I in you. Now, now what this word abide, now keep this in mind. The, uh, we, we talked about the first two uh, chapters uh, that we talked about is about fellowship. The first four or five verses, eight verses, we talk about that's what fellowship, this is what fellowship is. If you walk in the light, you don't hate your brother. You love this and love that. In other words, you can walk in fellowship with God and with each other. In other words, because, you say, why is that? Because the same Holy Spirit, if we're born again this morning, lives in you, is the same one that lives in me, so we can have that fellowship. There's something there that uh, we can have. When, and we talked about chapter 3 through uh, Five, he's going to talk about sonship. And we'll get into that next week, Lord willing. We start talking what constitutes a son and things like that because John is going to let us know that. All right, now watch. Abide in me, verse 4. You say, what is abide? Write this down or you know, if you're taking note. It means to keep in fellowship with Christ so that His life can work in and through us, guess what? To produce fruit. You see, that's what the whole deal is about the Christian is producing fruit. We're not just mainly talk, we're not just talking about soul winning. The fruit of the Spirit is this, this, and this, and it. So all that stuff combined is, you know, the fruit. Here, you know, he's talking about uh, some thing to watch. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. So the word is making us clean. Verse 3, Jesus said, I'm the vine, ye are the branches. Is what we try to do is we try to manufacture this plastic fruit. And, it, and if somebody looked at the tree and said, oh, that guy or, or that lady, man, just look at them. Look at what's happening right there. And they're just grunting away and they're striving and they're striving. Just like, I can't take this anymore. Why? is because we're trying to do it in the flesh. And so the more that we try to do it ourselves, that plastic fruit is hanging down. But when we walk in the Spirit and allow the Spirit to direct our lives, guess what? The fruit comes automatically because the Spirit is the one producing the fruit, not us. And so uh, uh, we can look at that. Now watch. Verse 6. If a man abide not in me, in other words, you, you don't have that fellowship. In other words, you're not you know, being in the Word, letting it allow it to clean you up and to uh, give you direction. He is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them down into the fire, and they are burned. Now, there's a lot of people out there that try to make that teach that you can lose your salvation. Not what it's talking about. 
the context is talking about fruit, fruit bearing. And if I have uh, 99 apple trees out there and, and, uh, and uh, only one, you know, say 10% of them are producing fruit and these other ones are just all dried up and withered and they're not doing anything, why am I going to waste that acre of land or whatever those trees are on? Why don't I cut them down and put something out there that's going to do it, right? That's what he's talking about here. Now watch, here it is, verse 7. If ye abide in me, it's the word, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So there's one condition of prayer right there, is abiding in Christ and letting His words abide in us. You say, well, how do I do that? I've got to get into the Word of God. I've got to allow what, is, what, I'm being, what I'm reading and being taught to take root down here so that it's going to produce something. And, and the more that we listen to teaching, preaching, or, or, or tapes, or whatever you want to do it, and we do nothing about it, we don't hear, guess what? We start wondering. We're, we, we can allow ourselves to be seduced right there because the Word of God is not taking root down there to be able to produce anything. And so we're being sucked in with the world and the things of the world. Now, back to... Uh, I'll look at verse 10 real quick. If you keep my commandment, you shall abide in my love. That's what we talked about in 1 John, love. He that abideth in love, in other words... Now watch, verse 11. These things have I spoken to you that my joy might... What's the next word? Remain, okay? Abide... And remain. Come back here. Uh, behave yourself. Me. Uh, remain. This is my commandment, verse 12, that you love one another as I have loved you. And so we see, now back to 1 John. So we see that John is saying basically the same thing from 1 John. In other words, is what we see it, we see it live action. Here he's writing something, but in John you see the action going on behind the teaching. Okay? Let that therefore abide in you. That's the word. Which ye have heard from the beginning. In other words, the beginning we said that, that was when Christ uh, was, uh, came down to earth uh, as you know God in the flesh. That was the beginning he's talking about right there. Now watch. If... That which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you. There it is. The next one is remain. How does something remain in some something? In other words, if it's taken root, in other words, it's going to be down there. Hold your place there and turn back to the book of Colossians real quick. I was going to use this at the end. But I'll go ahead and use it now. Colossians chapter uh, 2. could quote these things, but I want you to see this, the connection here. Colossians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Great power and electric company, remember. Colossians chapter 2. Everybody there. I want you to see this. Verse 5. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the Spirit, joying, beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith. There's that steadfast. And he's going to tell you how this steadfastness comes about. Now watch. As. Okay, he's going to give something... Uh, ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. How did we receive Christ Jesus the Lord? By what? By our faith, right? The faith, in other words, we received it by faith, right? Okay, that's, everybody got that? So walk ye in Him. So that means that as I, you know, I uh, receive this salvation by faith, Guess how I'm going to walk? It's by faith. Galatians 
I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So you see that that's how it's going to be done. That's how we're going to walk. Steadfast. Now watch verse 7. Here it is right here. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. What do we see over there? Remaining. Established. In other words, you're built up, you're rooted. In other words, it's got that good ground, that good soil. It's got that, uh, we fed it, the, you know, the vitamins and all the stuff, you know, putting around the tree and things like that. You know, and so now it's rooted down there and it's bearing, you know, fruit. Well, just like this, as I've received Christ, I'm going to walk in Him. I've got to be in the Word so that I learn how to abide in Him. Because the word is the one that makes me clean. Now back to John. Uh, First John. Now notice, abiding is something which they heard. Verse 24, from the beginning. Not something new. If, now watch this, if, that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain, it's going to stay there. Why? Because it's been rooted and it's being built up and established. That's how it's going to remain. In you. Now notice the next word. Ye shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. Did you see the word continue? Now watch. Look at verse 19 once again. They went out from us, that's those false teachers, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued. They didn't have it. But here, if we're in Christ, and we're abiding in the Word, and we're allowing this to remain, it will help us to continue to where we're not seduced by these false teachers and this false prophet right here. Here's the key is the truth that we just talked about from the beginning. That's Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Not a God. So that's it right there. There's the key. Now notice, this is the promise that He hath promised us even eternal life. These Things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. So he's telling them, in other words, these people are going to try to suck you in. They're going to try to play, play you and bring you in. This doctrines of devils and demons and everything else out there. But we have the truth, and if we're abiding in the Word, and He's abiding in us, we remain and we can continue right there because we've been rooted and built up in the faith. Now watch. These things have written in you concerning them that can seduce you. Now, here again is going to be the part that you need to watch. Verse 27. This is the last verse on, in this section. But the anointing which you have received of him, what's the next word? Abideth in you. And you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in Him. Now notice that right there, this anointing. That's the same uh, word when you get back up uh, to verse 20, but you have an unction from the Holy One. That's that's that anointing. In other words, uh, verse 27, the same thing. Right there. That you have received of Him. Now watch this right here. Because this is what is going to give uh, security to the believer right here. Is this anointing. Hold your place and turn to Ephesians chapter 1. This word abideth. This anointing. Abideth in you. Ephesians chapter 1.
stay Ubu. <laughs> Ephesians 1. Verse 13. In whom? That's Christ, verse 12. The last antecedent there. Ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of what? Of truth. The gospel of your salvation. Okay, that's the truth of the gospel. How do we get saved? By the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Now watch. In whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit, capital S, of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, verse 14, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of His glory. And that, in other words, we have been sealed, this anointing, okay? Now watch, this anointing is a one-time thing, okay? The minute that we are saved, and again, we don't have time to look at and run all the scriptures, I wish I did, uh, but again, a person that is saved, the minute he receives Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within him. You, you, at that particular time, you have gotten the Holy Spirit all of how much you're going to get Him. It doesn't change. You get the whole package. And it's what that guarantees us. That's why this word abide is so important because of the permanence and because of the security of the believer that I can know because of the Holy Spirit, He has sealed me. Until the day of redemption. That's when the day of redemption is when my body is going to be changed into His likeness. We'll get in that uh, next week, uh, Lord willing, we see that. Into His likeness. Okay? Once that happens, guess what? Faith is no more. Why? I'll see Him face to face. First John 3, 1 and 2. And so, we're going to see that. Now watch. Back to First John. And we'll wrap this thing up. There are people out there that claim uh, to have many anointings. You get one time. One time. Not many times. Now, we are to walk in the Spirit. We are to be filled with the Spirit. Meaning, I mean, we do that. You can do that every day. I pray that every day. That God would fill me with His Holy Spirit. So that I can walk. And talk like I'm supposed to walk and talk. In other words, you know, and things like that, this anointing. Notice it again, verse 27, but the anointing, singular, not anointings which you have received of Him. Again, there's, a, there's a one anointing. I can name you Christian after Christian that went after, suppose, I'm talking about big name people, that you and I, it's the same camp that you've probably heard of, uh, that uh, run in these circles that talk about getting that second blessing. There is no second blessing. You know, it's one time. It's a one time thing. In other words, a Christian is instructed to be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5, 19. Uh, to walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. Uh, again, to be led of the Spirit. Uh, Galatians 5.18 talks about being... Now, if you are filled and uh, you're walking, in other words, being led of the Spirit. The believer has the indwelling from the time of the Spirit's salvation and he is to yield. See, that's the problem right there is we don't allow this stuff... We don't abide in the Word and allow that to remain in us to help us to continue. Why? Because we've never allowed it to take root to where it's built us up uh, into steadfastness. Okay? And so it's what we need to do. Again, this is how it works. That's what John is talking about. But the anointing which you have received of Him abideth in you. And you need not that any man teach you. Now that doesn't say that we don't need teachers, we don't need preachers. They're gifts from the Holy Spirit to the church. Ephesians chapter 4, 11 to 15. Okay, they're gifts uh, that has been given. A gift is given, right? And so uh, we see that. Um, this gift is given. And so you say, what does it say, mean about not having a teacher? That means that as I grow and abide and remain and continue and am rooted up right there, I don't have to be dependent 
on them. I don't have to run to that com- commentary. I don't, you know, in other words, when somebody says, uh, I listen, and if it's, uh, I obey what is being said, if it's the truth, but I don't have to be completely dependent. Why? Because like First John, children, young men, fathers, they're rooted, they're growing, they're being established. And so that's what you and I have right here as a believer by having the Holy Spirit, and John is teaching that right there, and is truth, and is no lie, even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide. So that's what I am to do, no, abide in him, and he in me, and I can ask what I will, and it shall be done unto me. And so, in other words, that's one of the keys to prayer, uh, that, and that's not carte blanche. God, give me a million, you know, this, this type. We're not talking about that kind of stuff. We're talking about spiritual things, uh, which the world knows nothing about. And so this week, take notes if you took any. Look at this uh, passage again, and then we're going to put this, what we learned today, in the context of how that's going to show us next week when it talks about how that we'll see Christ face to face and what that's supposed to do in our lives as a result of that. And so, uh, again, uh, being rooted and grounded in Him, established in the faith. One more uh, verse, and then we'll pray. First uh, Peter chapter five. Real quick, just should have told you when you had your book open, John. First Peter chapter five. Real quick. Look at verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Good verse to memorize. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists, uh, resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, it's going to make you perfect, it's going to establish, it's going to strengthen, it's going to settle you. So these Christ and these things that are coming into our lives, again, when we abide in Him, we're going to learn what He's trying to teach us, and it's going to help and, uh, to remain and continue. And that's what's going to root us and establish us in the faith. And so let's not knock, uh, again, we don't like uh, crises. We don't like things like that in our life. I don't. Uh, I don't think anybody does. But they're, they're there for a reason. And uh, we allow the Holy Spirit to teach us uh, that. So let's pray. Father, thank you for the book, Lord, that uh, you've given to us. Lord, I'm grateful, Lord, that you can teach us to abide and remain and continue. Lord, being rooted and built up in you. Father, help us to stay and keep our nose in the Word of God, Lord, uh, so that we do not falter. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.